Welcome back to Big Boris Steel, where after back-to-back -back promotions, I fear things are about to get an awful lot tougher. We take our place in Spain's second tier. We've got our first game today. The media don't rate our chances of survival very highly. Let's play our first game and see how we get on. Before we get into today's episode, we've got a couple of bits of admin to do. First of all, we're welcoming a new patron to the channel. Thank you to Matt Roberts for signing up over on Patreon. If you're interested, you can find links down in the video description below. Matt, your support is massively appreciated. Hopefully, we can reward you with a win on the opening day of the season today. But before we get to that opening fixture, I thought we should have a quick chat first just about the future of this save and the future of the channel. Because you know, I am a glutton for punishment. I'm not a big fan of saves where you earn back-to-back -back promotions. I'm expecting things to get an awful lot tougher this season. We're going to be up against some pretty big teams. I'm actually half wishing that we're in a relegation scrap this season because I don't really enjoy taking on challenges that turn out to be too simple. I thought this was going to be a tough one, going from the fourth tier of Spanish football all the way to the top without spending any money on transfers. But back-to-back -back promotions have shown me that maybe it's not going to be the insurmountable task that I thought it was. So. My question for you down in the comments is, are you enjoying this series? Do you actually like seeing us win promotions and win games during episodes? Or are you yearning for a return to the dark days of FM21 where most of the episodes we bought you were defeat, where things were a real uphill struggle, where there were relegations and sackings and me being rather bleak and defeatist? Maybe we've got room for a second save on the channel where we could take on a real tough challenge, something where the prospects of success are absolutely hopeless. If that's interesting to you, let me know down in the comments, or if you're quite enjoying seeing us rise up through Spanish football, well, equally let us know that as well. Now, that's our couple of bits of admin out of the way. Let's jump in and see what we're up against at this new level. So here we are then, the opening day of the season, and we've been handed an away trip to Las Palmas, a club that have played in the top flight an awful lot more recently than we have. Three seasons gone pretty well. We only had time for five pre-season friendlies, but we won them all, including a nice little win against Deportivo La Coruña, who were defeated in the playoffs at the same level as we were playing in. Last season, you'll see plenty of new signings on the score sheet in those games. Those new signings have strengthened us, I think, but they've also created one major headache, which I should explain to you now. Football manager likes to throw challenges your way. It's certainly done that this season in the form of us not being able to register some of our players for this competition, including arguably our most important player in Lander. We can't register him, I fear. We've lost him to the club. Let me explain why I strengthen the team by signing a new attacking midfielder, Lander arrived in the office with concerns that this might limit his own game time. We assured him that there would be plenty of game time for them both. In fact, they would be playing different positions on the pitch. He was happy with that, but he's now waiting on a promise of us guaranteeing him more football. In the meantime, we found out that to register players for the squad for the second division this season, they must be paid a minimum of £1,400 per week, Lander is on a contract that only pays him £975 a week. We'd love to pay him more, except he's waiting for the fulfilment of his promises before considering his future. Now, we can't give him the football that we promised him because we can't register him. We can't register him because he won't sign a new contract, but he won't sign a new contract because we haven't given him the football that we promised him. It's a mess, and I think it means... We're going to lose our best player for the season. Luckily, we've signed a couple of goodies. Let's show you who we've bought. OK, the squad is stronger. I really do think that, although not being able to register some of our top players for this competition is an almighty blow. I had been so prudent during the summer, not offering players contracts that were extortionate in value, making sure that I bartered them down, tried to keep the wage budget under control only to come to try and register a squad about a week before the first game of the season to be told that unless they were paid a minimum of £1,400 per week, they weren't allowed to play. I've managed to renegotiate the contracts of some of those players. It's pushed us way over our wage budget, by the way. But Lander is just 
a stuck situation, I'm afraid. So let's have a look at who is new, who might be able to rescue us this season. We're going to stick with Nelson in goal, the same centre-backs and Rosanna's playing as right-back. But Guti has left the club and we've now got Lionel Ferroni, an Argentinian 28-year-old left-back who's not as quick as Guti is, but I think is more rounded. And I think when he does get forward, might be able to be more of a threat for us in the final third of the pitch. Going further forward, we've got a new man in the midfield as well. An international, no less, although it is with Mauritania. But he's a central midfielder called Hassan, who I think is pretty well-rounded. He's not spectacular, although he's rated as one of our best players at the club. He's been good in pre-season. I think he can just sit in front of that back four and break up play. He's very fit. He meets a lot of the prerequisites of our DNA. He can pass a ball and tackle a little bit as well. I don't think he's going to get any better at the age of 26, but I think he should be a solid citizen for us. We'd like to have Lander over here on the right. We don't. So Geordie's going to move out there. Kevin Carlos will be on the left. We'll have Mickey in midfield, who's looking pretty fine I have to say 24 years old he was last season but still made lots of improvements I'd like to try and get more improvement out of his game this year we've got a couple of new players going further forward the player that upset Lander was Bruno Guelfi another Argentinian not stunning I think you will agree but some high attributes in key areas made me pull the trigger on him he's a very good dribbler great first touch great passing Vision's not terrible. Flair is decent. Composure is good. Space, acceleration, strength, all things that I look for in a player that's going to play behind a lone front man. He's been good during preseason. He can continue that today against Las Palmas. And then probably the best of our signings from the summer is going to be an Italian, Alessandro Rossi. This guy wanted £15,000 per week and probably... When you look at his attributes, he's probably deserving of that kind of money. But we were able to barter him down to just £7,500 per week. And during pre-season, he scored eight goals in four games. I think he looks fabulous. You'd like him to be a better finisher. Granted, it would be great if he was a little quicker. I acknowledge that. But elsewhere in his game, I think he's strong. He suits our DNA well. He's aggressive. He's brave. He's determined. The teamwork and the work rate are great. He wants to play as a pressing forward. He's going to run around all day with that natural fitness. The stamina is decent as well. He's pretty good in the air. He's six foot. He can jump. He can head. I think this boy can score goals for us. And we've still got KC, who was one of the division's top scorers when we were promoted last campaign. So we've got goals in the squad. And we've still got Yaya Sonongo kicking around as well. So I think we've strengthened. It's just the blow of not being able to register Lander that's hit us pretty hard. Maybe that situation will resolve itself. Maybe we're resigned to losing him. But let's get out there and see how we do on the first day of the season against Las Palmas. Can we get an opening day victory? Okay, season four of Beg Borrow Steel is underway. Look at the size of the arena we're playing in, by the way, and we are underway. The pre-match press conference was a bit of a worry. It was a lot of doom-mongering. So was the pre-match team talk suggestion from the assistant, by the way, who basically advised us to tell the players to go out there and get whooped and not worry too much about it. Well, I've got slightly higher hopes than that. I don't want a whooping. And I tell you what, our new number 10, Galfi, has had an effort for us in the opening 30 seconds. We look pretty good during pre-season. I've got high hopes for Rossi. Hassan in midfield looks pretty good as well. So I don't think we're going to get destroyed by teams at this level, but you never know. This is a massive step up. We're spending hardly any money compared to other teams in this division. But I tell you what, our new man Bruno has got us off to a dream start. Seven minutes on the clock. Didn't see who sent the cross in, but I did glance up and see a rather nice little volley home. Kevin Carlos gets the ball back to our new left back. Ferroni hits the byline, swings it over. There's two men that could have tucked that effort away. 
Gelfi, the new number 10, is the man that does it. And we are underway. We've got some big clubs competing at this level, by the way, including Espanyol. This is a far cry from where we started out in the fourth tier. But we're looking to try and compete at this level. We've noticed Asen's already picked up a booking. That's a worry. Here's Rossi. And I tell you what, he announces himself to the Europa faithful as well. 20 yards out, low drive. He has sent one past the last Palmas keeper. And who are we giving to the assist to this time? jordi has got the ball. He tucks it inside. It's Gelfi who's got a goal and an assist now. And our two new players up top have both done the business for us. We're glancing at who else is in this division. Racing, Santander, Malaga. I think Mallorca at this level as well. All clubs that are used to playing in the top division of Spanish football and we're rubbing shoulders with them. We've got a bit of defending to do before the break. We need to keep this clean sheet all the way into half time. And we've managed to rob the ball. Rossi is going to work hard up there as the pressing forward. He's won us the ball back on the halfway line. We've got it to Rosanis, Hassan. Now into the magic man, Guelfi. We've got Mickey, Kevin Carlos. He's in again. It's Rossi. That was probably an easier chance than the one he tucked away for his goal. And we've played pretty well in that first half. We're going to tell the boys as much. We're going to see you for the second period. Okay, we're back underway for the second half. We've got lots of good performances out there. We're just going to keep a bit of an eye on fitness. We've got three changes to make. We've not managed to fill the bench for this game, given we can't register all of our players. We've got work to do there to try and get more of them onto contracts that mean that we can pick them. We've come straight out for the second half. And by the way, we're showing no let up. Rossi has risen and thumped a header past their keeper. That's his second. All these players signed for free transfers, by the way. Rossi was a former youth player at Lazio. Now finds himself playing for us. In the second tier, I think we're going to leave it until 65 minutes and then make two substitutes. Hassan is booked and tired. I think he's going to have to come off. I'm also looking at Mickey and I'm looking at Guelfi. as other players that might need to be changed. We're in again. Here is Mickey. Ah, oh, he's not fine on that occasion. He's taken a pretty decent chance and sent it wide of the post. Right, time for some reinforcements to freshen things up. Things are looking good. OK, 25 minutes to go. We've made a bit of a gamble. We've actually made all three of our changes. So if anybody gets injured, we are down to 10 men. Worryingly, we didn't have another player that could naturally come on and play that number 10 role. So we've brought Kadira on to try and play there. He's a winger or a striker, really. And not one that's particularly in favour with me, given the sending off that he had last season. But he's in now, by the way. And he could have made it up to me a little bit. He at least got himself into a good position. But the goalie's tipped it wide. I'm trying to think back. We've not seen many chances for Las Palmas, I don't think. We've been pretty dominant. We've played a nice little short corner routine. Jordi may have been offside there, but he certainly couldn't get onto the ball. And look at that table. It's only going to be one game play. Let's not get carried away. But this would certainly be a good start. We're into the final seven minutes or so. We're trying to win the ball back again. We've got still plenty of tired legs out there, even after our changes. We've also got another player on a booking that I've noticed, but we've got some great performances. Smitty into Jordi. I think that's going to be offside and ruled out. Is it? Maybe it isn't. Maybe we've just gone 4-0 up with a little set-piece routine as well. They're checking it. We must have VAR at this level. It's been disallowed. OK, standard. It's back to FM 21 days again. Didn't know we had VAR. In fact, we've got five players offside there, so you could take your pick. But we've restricted Las Palmas to just one shot on target whilst we've had 12. And as we approach the final minute of play, that is a good afternoon's work from the players. It would be nice just to keep the clean sheet. Our new left back's not the quickest, but he keeps up with play. And we thump the ball clear. We've got a final little spell of defending to do. And then a very decent afternoon's work is done. That disallowed goal would have made it 4-0. Well, that would have been just too much to hope for. We've got Jordi. We've got Kadira. We've got our right back, Rosanus. 
maybe this is going to be one last chance, you know, because if we could get the ball through, we're in as Rossi is on a debut hat-trick here. He slotted it away. That's three goals for Alessandro Rossi. Clearly not good enough to play in Serie A for Lazio, but at this level, I think he is going to be dangerous. If he was a little bit quicker, by the way, I think he could play top division football, but certainly we are grateful that he's picked us. And that's what seven and a half thousand pounds a week gets you. And a hat trick for him and a 4 0 win for us. Well, is beyond what I was hoping for, in all honesty. Nobody gave us a chance today. That's absolutely true. I tell you what, I think people are going to be sitting up and taking notice after that little victory because 4 0 puts us top of the table earlier on. I think tougher games are around the corner. Our next one is against Barcelona's B team. We'll come back when about 10 games of the season are played. And we'll see whether we're still near the top of the table. Have we sunk into mid-table? Or is this season going to be about battling relegation despite our good start?